Before we start this video, I want to give a massive shout out to Skillshare who kindly offered to sponsor this video. The first 500 people to sign up with my link will get two months free. For more details, click the link in the video description. If you are or have been in the market for a budget smartphone over the past three to four years, you've probably come across handsets with lots of cores and lots of RAM. With a system on a chip from a certain manufacturer, you might not know much about. I'm of course talking about MediaTek, the Taiwanese semiconductor manufacturer who produced chips for many types of devices. Hey guys, my name is Ryan Thomas for Failtech and today I want to discuss MediaTek's mobile chip division, what it all means and whether or not you should avoid them. One of the biggest unknowns in the tech space is what the naming schemes and product codes mean when it comes to MediaTek's lineup. I decided to take some time, perhaps more than I'd like to admit, to research the company and figure out just how the product codes work. Here are my findings. Firstly, there are three classes of chip, A, P and X, in ascending order of performance, but also naturally price. The next two characters in the three long string represent the series of the chip, so a Helio P90 is going to be newer and faster than the Helio P70, even if they're using the same manufacturing process. The company tends to create SOCs with many cores, which can look great on paper, but can also be fabbed and sold for less money than the big guys whose processors look almost the same on paper to the layperson, but for more money and as we know, with more performance. So what's the big deal? And why are MediaTek's products so much cheaper? Well, for that, we first need to analyze the big benchmarks. Geekbench and Antutu, and for comparison's sake, I'll be looking at three chips, the P90, the P70, and the P60, comparing them to the Snapdragon 845, 835, and 820, since the 821 was a bit of a refresh. This table might represent a jumble, but when we break it down, it starts to make sense. We have the chip names, the rough release dates, and the benchmark scores. I'll leave a link to this exact document in the description, but the raw data is presented without any kind of clear order. So by turning it into a graph and ordering it in Antutu score descending, we can clearly see the win for the Snapdragon 845, with the Helio P90 and Snapdragon 835 taking second and third place respectively, and a smooth drop off after that. A few things to take away here. One, the Snapdragon 845 is a heckin fast chip. The 820 is surprisingly high up there, and 3, MediaTek's PDO P90 is pretty fast, even beating the 835 by a significant margin. To make a bit more sense out of this information, we're going to compare the top 3 chips from each of the two companies by breaking down several of their respective properties and characteristics, hopefully allowing us to see the main differences. Starting with the highest end parts, the 845 from Snapdragon and the P90 from Helio, we see that both are manufactured with different sized dies, and whilst they may contain the same number of cores and shoot the same maximum resolution photos, they differ in max resolution video shooting and viewing since the P90 has a significantly weaker GPU. This is where I believe we should see the 845 pull much ahead. Moving on to Qualcomm's previous year's chip versus the Helio P70, we see a similar story, although this time the video specs of the MediaTek part are far lower, with Full HD 30p as the best video it can record, and the maximum screen resolution being just slightly more than Full HD, despite the P70 being far newer than the Snapdragon part. And when switching to an even older Snapdragon 820, we start to see why MediaTek is known for their great feature list, if lower end power. The 820 is substantially more capable and still has a far better camera and display specification, however it supports older memory and slower storage, built on an older and far less efficient manufacturing process. So we've established that the raw performance and feature sets are pretty comparable on both platforms. So why are lower end smartphones, marketed at the sub 200 US dollar market, using these chips? What's the need? Well it's simple, they look good on paper low cost, big core count and decent feature set. I can say from personal experience that these Helio units aren't bad. The Umi Digi Z2 that I use daily sports a Helio P23 and it works pretty well but, and there is a but, given the choice, I will always take the Snapdragon, Kirin or Exynos powered phone. And before we go, I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Their online courses, classes and learning materials are super handy and at an affordable price for everyone. There are lessons and classes in everything from art to maths to design 
to everything that you could pretty much ever imagine. It's a super versatile tool and platform and hugely recommended for those of you who just want to get started in a new hobby or craft. I'm a huge advocate for education and online learning, studying at the OU myself, and the first 500 members to sign up with my link below will receive two free months. Again, a massive thank you to them for helping me out with this video and indeed for helping to educate the world. Anyway, with that short analysis completed, I want to thank you all so much for watching. Please do like, dislike, comment and subscribe if you're new interested in a missed video like this one. And also check out social media links in the video description below. Thank you so much to my patrons. You guys are awesome. My name is from Ryan Swamps for Failtech and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.